Good morning everyone and welcome to the second video in this three-part series on content creation. In the last video, I gave you a few tips and introduced you to a few basic pieces of equipment and some settings. And we're going to take off where we left off in the last video. We're going to go out and get some uh, clips as we progress down the Port River and on to the open sea and I'm gonna upload it. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different editors out there, in particular, my editor that I use. And from there, I'm gonna show you how we put that footage together. As we go out, I'm just going to walk around the boat and I'm going to take a series of clips that I'm going to use, probably against a backdrop of a piece of music. And each clip can be about 10 seconds long. Uh, if you want to go 20, that's better yet. It just gives you plenty of room to clip out the beginning and the end so you get the piece you like. So for example, from here, without even turning the camera off, I can point the camera forward and hold it for 10 to 20 seconds, like this. I can do a pan, but remember, many people will tell you, you need to pan to something rather than nothing. That's one for my sister. So in this case, it's the sail with the name on it. The name, by the way, means liberator or emancipator. I've never heard anyone call their boat it before, so uh, there you go. Uh, for the next clip, I'm gonna go forward and look aft. And then I'm going to do a, uh, just a pan, if you can call it that, up the mast. There's no sail up yet, that's to come. Going to take some nice uh, shots over the side. Just be careful not to drop your camera when you do this. I'm now sitting down on the bow and I'm going to get a shot looking backwards along the hull. Now I'm going to get a shot just off the bow itself as it cuts through the water. This shot is kind of your standard king of the world kind of titanic shot uh, looking forward what you would see. Now just one looking back. I don't have to try too hard to smile because it's a lovely day out here and it's a nice breeze. Where, where else would you want to be given a choice?
I'm now going to do a shot over the back of the boat, but rather than just idling, I want to see the wake, so we'll just turn that up. We're now going to remove the sail bag because we are actually going to go sailing today for a bit. This is the bit where it's good if you can have a nice smooth motion, but sometimes it gets caught in the runners. So what you've got to do is head into the wind when you're doing this. Ready about, and then you look around. Lee ho, start the turn. I'm going to just pull it in a little bit because we are going to be going upwind. Going through the wind at the moment. Coming out on the other side of the boat. So you've got your video footage, now what do you do with it? Well, you put it on the computer and you edit it. So you're going to need a computer. Um, if you've got a desktop, that's great. That used to be what people would use for editing. They were more powerful. But laptops these days have come on a long way. I use a gaming computer and I've never used a desktop uh, since I've been basically putting videos online. So get your footage and either plug in your uh, USB cable, um, just in the same way you transfer pictures from your camera, or take out your SD card, or in my case, more often than not, I've got a mini SD card that goes into uh, an adapter, and that just simply slides into the side, and it, it's no different to any other uh, external device, it will register, and then you can drag those files over to where you're going to store them. Now, you can store them on the hard drive on the computer, but you're going to find you're going to go through a lot of space very quickly and a lot of that footage is going to end up on the cutting room floor. That is, you're going to find some stuff that you're just not going to use. So you're going to need one of these or maybe one of these. So external hard drive, um, external solid state drive, uh, no moving parts. I think it's all in like flash drive or something like that. I don't know all the technicalities about it except they're faster and they are more expensive generally speaking. But if you do find some good deals going, uh, my preference is to go with the SSDs. Otherwise, external hard drives are fine. Plug them in, and then the first thing is just to drag all your files over to your external hard drive. I just make a directory for each project I do, put all the video files in, put all the photo files I'm going to use, um, music which you'll come to shortly, drag those music files in as well for soundtracks, and when you're saving the file itself as you are going through your editing process, I don't just save the one copy, I also save a backup. And that's just really good because I might do a, an hour of editing and then go, oh, I'm not happy with what I've done. I'm not happy with how I've put it to that piece of music. I want to revert to an earlier copy and that's where the backup comes in, all right? So editors, um, oh, this is a big subject and I'm only just gonna touch on it. If you want to find out about editors, there's a lot of different videos you can actually look at on YouTube where people are talking about the best uh, editors you can buy or the best free editors that you can get online. And I just want to touch on it, as I said, it might be that your laptop or your computer is an earlier version and on it you might have something called Windows Movie Maker, which is a free editor. It's been around for a long time. Uh, it is discontinued now, so if you wanted to upload it from online, you have to go looking for it, but my understanding is it is actually still there. Uh, I started off with that, and I've got to say it's pretty intuitive, pretty good, and it's a great starting point. But if you don't have that and you have Windows 10, then you might well have Windows 10 Video Editor, which is, I don't know, it's intuitive to a point, but I just find it's, it's not really my preference. So uh, if you want to have a look where it is, just do a search for video editor on your computer and, you'll, and it will take you to it. Open it up and, you know, it's just like with the, with the cameras in the first episode that I did. Use what you've got first and then from there you can decide uh, whether you want to upgrade to a better editor. Um, some of the things that both Windows Movie Maker and Windows 
10 video editor don't have. Uh, they don't have the, abil the ability to do uh, audio keyframing, which is when you basically go down to the audio and you move it up or move it down. So you basically you can blend audio into soundtracks, um, and which is really useful if you're gonna be doing a bit of narration and you just want to turn the soundtrack down and then turn it back up again. So for me, I like to be able to keyframe uh, my audio and, and some people do it with the video as well. So neither one of those programs has that. And Windows 10 Video Editor also doesn't have the ability to do any kind of transition, but you know, if you're just putting your video footage from your, your holiday that you've just had together, it doesn't really matter. If you want to get a really good free editor, um, as I said, look at a video on free editors, best free editors, and you'll find some names that come up quite a bit. One of those, for example, is DaVinci Resolve. And there's also a paid version called DaVinci Resolve Studio. And some of the stuff I've seen done with it, because I haven't used it myself, is pretty good. It's almost like professional standard. So that might be a good place to start if you really want to go that extra mile and have those extra features and have the ability to, to upgrade to a paid version. Uh, if you've got a Mac, you might want to look at something like Final Cut Pro. That's, uh, that's a paid program, but it's, uh, it's something that was used quite a lot in the media and in the entertainment industry for many years. Uh, it's a very good program. I know many people who use it and uh, swear by it. Uh, for me, I kind of like the Adobe products, uh, but there are so many. You go on the Adobe website, you're gonna see 50 or 60 odd products you can download. And if you want the best of the best straight off the cuff, then you're looking at something like Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, which is a subscription-based editor. It's a uh, professional standard. There are so many things you can do with it. One of the best things you can do with it is that you can dynamically link it with other Adobe products. So notwithstanding the fact that Adobe Premiere Pro itself has some, some uh, special effects, uh, things you can do with it, you can go a lot further with things like Adobe After Effects, and then you can link that into Premiere Pro. Um, you can do Adobe Audition, Photoshop, you name it. There's so many products. But as I say, the disadvantage is it's subscription-based that you've got to keep paying if, if that's what you want to use. So for me, much as I like Adobe, I am currently using Adum Adobe Premiere Elements. So I started off about 10 years ago with uh, Elements 12, now I'm on Elements uh, 21. And it's just, it's just a little bit more simpler, uh, a little bit more basic than the professional version. You spend a few hundred dollars and basically it's yours. You don't have to keep paying a subscription. So that's the editor I'm using and it's the one I'm going to show you a few things on today. So this is Adobe Premiere Elements. Uh, this is what is commonly referred to as the timeline, which is a layered approach to editing that most video editors have. In order to try and explain this better, the best thing I can probably do is to start adding some media. However, one thing you can do is, I, I normally use expert mode, which don't worry about it, it's not that complicated but uh, the guided mode will actually take you through step by step. So that's what a lot of people can use if they're just starting off. Uh, for example, getting started is gonna cover the kind of things I'm gonna talk about tonight. So I'll go back to expert mode. I just like to see things in more detail on the timeline. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add some media. I'm gonna to go to my external hard drive and I'm specifically gonna to go to the episode we are creating at the moment, which is episode 26. And I'm gonna get probably just a couple of clips for this demonstration. And you'll notice as soon as I uh, select them, they come up with my project assists, or sorry, project assets. And I can turn that on and off. And when it's on, it will have video clips, it will have music, it will have pictures. So in order to put these on the timeline, all you do is you select and you drag it down there. And I'm gonna be dragging down to where it says video one, audio one. The audio being uh, the audio that is already attached to the clip. And I'm gonna drag the next one. Well, actually they're out of sequence, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna just put it on the end there. It's that simple. You drag it down there, okay? And the, the, the clip with me in it at the top is like your preview pane. And that's what you use when you're editing. Don't worry too much about how good the resolution is or is not because when you render it and you 
um, export and share, it will make a much better quality video. So the first thing I would like to tell you about is a little bit what's on the screen. I'm just going to quickly go through this. So as I say, this is the timeline. Uh, this is the video and audio one. That's where you first put your footage and you can layer it up by putting additional overlays above or below, whether it's additional video or some music or a narration, whatever you want to do. If I want to save the project, I just go up to file and, and this is pretty intuitive like any Microsoft uh, product. You can save, save as, uh, and this is also where you open a saved project. And as I say, save early and save often and save a backup, okay? The first thing I want to show you today is basically how we split a clip and it's something that you use quite a bit. So I'm just gonna go on to a particular area in this clip I'm just dragging this cursor across, all right? And you'll notice that the, the footage moves around a bit and I want to cut that away. So if I play this bit of footage in the preview screen, you'll see I'm gonna move the camera around a bit. I'm not quite finding the spot. Then I'm happy with it and I'm gonna go pause. And that's where I'm gonna use the, it's like a pair of scissors, the cutting tool. And you can see that I've cut that clip. All right, and all I do is I select the first clip, I press delete and goodbye, it's gone. Okay, so that's basically, when I talk about putting things on the cutting room floor, that's exactly what I've done there. I have cut that clip so that it starts off with the footage I want. And then if I play it through here, I'm just sort of fast forwarding to a point just after we pass this beacon, you'll notice that I move the camera again and the footage becomes unusable. All right, so I don't want that. I want to go up to about there. This time I'm not going to cut it, I'm going to, well, effectively do the same, but I'm going to drag the end of the clip back. All right, this is something I like doing quite a bit, and I'm going to then join this with the next clip, but whereabouts am I going to join it? Well, let's find out. Guess what? We're going to use that clip right there. Okay, just like I did with the first one, select, the cutting tool and I just simply delete that out of the way. Now just as a point here that's very important, if at any stage I want to undo what I've done you just use the undo tool and that comes back all right but I want to redo that I want to get rid of it and now we go from that clip to the next one. So if we don't put any kind of transition which is the next thing by the way we're going to get to this is how it plays out. We go past the beacon and it cuts straight to the view from the bow. Now that's all well and good. Sometimes that works. What we're going to do is we're going to use a transition. There's loads of transitions in here, all right? I use cross dissolve and dip to black the most. And this is particularly effective when we are using a piece of music that's nice and melodic. And I'm just going to drag this transition over here. And I'm going to do a long transition of three seconds. And you can also choose whether you put the alignment to the left, the right, or in the middle. The middle is the obvious place. So we're going to play this out, but before we do, occasionally you're going to need to press this key here, which is render, and it just smooths it out, all right? So let's get to where we were before the transition, and hopefully what you'll see as we pass the marker now is not just a, from one clip to the other. You see how that took place? Alright, it hasn't rendered perfectly, but don't stress about that. Once we do a finished video, it will be okay. So that's cross dissolve. Now, we're going to make another clip in a second. And again, we're going to cut the clip just about there. And we're going to move to something else. And in this case, it's going to be not me talking. Let's move to the front of the boat. And I'm just going to. Again, I'm gonna drag it. I'm gonna use the other way of doing this, just like I showed you before. And while I would probably do a dissolve here, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna use dip to black, all right? And in it goes, three seconds. All right, and there you go. So it'll go from there, dip to black. And that's a different perspective, all right? Again, I'll need to, I need to render that. Another thing I want to show you while we're here is using the titles. Now you can do a title at the beginning and 
Again, simple can often be best, but feel free to go through this um, to your heart's content to find something you like. If you want something a bit more flashy, I just like to use the general title. In it goes, in the beginning. This might be what I use for a title, okay? Like this is the name of my video, for example, okay? And I center that. All right, I bold it, I can italic it. In this case, for whatever reason, it's just um, the first few words, so let's do that again. Every now and again, it does some strange things. Let's just undo that. Okay. All right, take two. Bold, metallic. Look at that, beautiful. All right, and maybe between the title and the start, we might use a transition again. In this case, we'll just use a dissolve. In this case, we'll do two seconds. Drag it over, select two seconds, and Bob your auntie. All right, we go from the title to the video. And this is where video programs sometimes uh, have a few quirks about them. Um, I just had to exit out of something because it didn't play it in the preview pane, but this is what it should look like, okay? Now I can put the title at the beginning over nothing, I can put it over the video as an overlay, or another thing I can do with titles is I can put captions, all right? They don't have to be exactly titles to a video. Let's do a caption. And all I do to do a caption is I select the text. I wanna make it smaller because it's a caption. I wanna do it in bold because I can. I wanna put it in the middle and I'm gonna drag it down to the bottom. Uh, and then you might wanna play around with the color a little bit. Okay, it's white, it shows up reasonably good against the dark background. Uh, black will show up okay as well, but sometimes you need something in between. I'm going to use yellow. Yellow is a colour which I find shows up quite well against a variety of different backgrounds. Alright, and as I say, this is a caption, so what we're going to call it, we're going to call it caption, say anything you want. Exclamation mark. All right, but just as I, I did with uh, the clips, you can um, basically transition in and out using dissolves if you wish. So it just sometimes makes it smoother. Sometimes you want to do this, sometimes you don't, um, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a cross dissolve at the beginning of the caption. I'm gonna have a cross dissolve at the end of the caption for just one second, all right? This time when I render, it's starting from the beginning. It does every time with this, or I can slide it to where the video starts and see how this just, there we go, transitions out, or in rather, and now it transitions out. And there you go. It's very simple, but still very powerful. The last thing I'm gonna show you in this, because to be honest, you know, a lot of this is just basically trial and error and just finding your own style. It's music. And in order to show you a little bit about music, first of all, we got to get said music. So I use uh, royalty-free music to avoid any kind of issues with uh, copyright. Uh, this is one of those sites, filmmusic.io. And I think what I'm gonna use for this is a piece of music called Angel Share. So I'll look for it. And it's uh, by Kevin MacLeod, who's probably the artist that has the most music on YouTube, as it turns out. And I'm just gonna search for that now. It's thinking, there he is. And you can just do a little bit of a, um, a, a preview, if you like. This is what it sounds like. Quite melodic. And if you want to download that, you just pick if you want a free license or an extended license for which you have to pay a very minimal amount. I have donated money, but I generally do free download. And if you do do a free download, yes, there are terms, read the terms. And this is the kind of thing that you're going to need to put in it either the credits or in the description box of your video. All right. And then you download it. It goes to downloads and then you can drag it into whatever folder you like. Now I don't need to do that because you probably guessed 
I already have it in a folder, this piece of music. Keep it on your external hard drive. Go looking for it, and there it is, Soundtracks. Angel Share, I select that, it comes up in Project Assist, and it's as simple as that, just like the footage, you drag it to where you want it. Music, for example. Incidentally, you can put this uh, in another area. All right, if I drag it up here under audio in um, audio and video three, it, it has no problem with that. It will also, I think, uh, go in the voice, but let's put it in music because I might want to do a narration. And as we are going over the water, approaching the marker, you're going to hear the music. And there's just one more thing I might want to tweak with that in this demonstration, and that's audio keyframing. So as the music comes in, I just want to dip the audio in the piece of um, video. All right, I'll zoom out. You can see the audio there. And I'm just going to see this line here, which I can move up or down, right? I don't want to do it for the whole clip, so I'm just going to select there and there, and I'm just going to turn the sound down a bit. And while the sound goes down, I could, if I wanted to, turn the audio up. It's that simple. All right. Pretty simple. Go on to the next clip after that, and the audio of the clip is a bit louder, and maybe I want to turn that down. Not all the way, just a little bit. All right. You can just hear the ambient sound. And you can hear the soundtrack in the background. All that remains, once you've finished it, once you've moved the music around, and one of the arts with putting a soundtrack in is trying to time it so as different things in the music happen, you can put your transitions or your, um, basically, let's say it's a piece of music that is quite staccato. You might want on the next note, all of a sudden, where it goes bang, to suddenly go straight into another clip without a transition. Play around with it. It's one of the most uh, time-consuming but enjoyable parts of editing a video. To finish on, when we've gone through that, we will want to export and share. Yes, there are numerous other tools here. Play with them at your heart's content. Um, you can add uh, effects, you can add sound effects, you can change the color, but this will get you started. Export and share, select device, and as I said in the first video, I always upload at this stage in 1080p and that's what I'm going to do today and when I've finished editing this I'm going to show you how this clip sounds when it's completed.
The last thing I'm gonna show you is something you don't have to do, but it certainly makes your videos a lot more visible when you're looking through the different videos on YouTube or another video platform. And that is to find a thumbnail that's customized that will show some of the action in your video. Uh, otherwise, it's just gonna randomly allocate a particular frame from it. So I've picked a particular frame where I'm about to hoist the mainsail. Um, you can do this on any particular program if you've got a photo you wanna use. I'm selecting 16.9 as the dimensions because that's the dimensions of my video. It will fill the frame. And I'm just going to go uh, freeze frame, export, and I'm just going to select essentially, um, I'm basically going to save this as thumbnail because that's what it's going to be. And then I'm going to create a new project. All right, totally blank. And I'm going to add that video thumbnail. All right, and now we've got a picture. I'm going to drag this down to the timeline. I'm going to make it a bit bigger just so you can see it there. And I'm going to add some text to it. I could use it as it is, some people do, but I'm going to add uh, an overlay. It's just what I do. Classic titles, general, and I'm going to put that over the top. And I'm going to change the text to something that I use a lot. Um, and that's a particular style. I'm just looking for it here. And there it is. Uh, Tekton Pro White 34. All right, there it is. And I'm just gonna change it and I'm gonna change this to bold. Actually, sorry, I'm gonna keep it like that. I'm gonna put it in the middle. I'm gonna drag it down the bottom and I'm just gonna fill the bottom with this text, all right? And in this case, I'm gonna rename it. And guess what it was? It was Australia Day uh, 2023, all right? And I'm just gonna change the dimensions of this to Basically the dimensions of the frame here, the inner part of this frame, okay? I'm gonna just shrink it, essentially. And it's out of the way of most of the action. And then I'm gonna save it again as a freeze frame. All right? And then we're gonna pretty much be done. Now you don't have to do it on here. You can make these personalized thumbnails however you like. But once you've done it, it'll be a JPEG and basically then you can use it as a picture like you would with anything else. So here we go. Uh, firstly, I'm gonna render and after I'm gonna render, I'm going to save as a, or edit, freeze frame, export, I'm actually gonna go straight over the top of this one called thumbnail, because I don't need this anymore. And I know it's gone red. Don't stress too much about that. Trust me, it's there. If I go to the directory with that in now, I'm gonna be able to find it, all right? So, keeping it real, episode 26. And lo and behold, there we have it. There is a thumbnail that I can now use on YouTube. And in our next content creation video, I'll show you how to put together a really raw video using nothing more than your phone and free software.